good morning. I'm Roy Jacobstein. Um, I have a short uh, presentation with a long title. I thought it was longer than that. Um, uh, it's supposed to be designed by the consultant. Um, but we're, we're going to, in about um, seven slides and eight minutes and about 31 clicks, uh, look at kind of the big picture of population and family planning, why it uh, remind ourselves that it affects positively all 17 of these SDGs. Pop encouraged us to be thinking about the so what. This is one of the so what's. For those of you in the future who are going to be working on SDGs, you can usefully uh, subdivide it into, and last year I read my poetry, I was reminding myself. So uh, to invoke the concept of alliteration, you can usefully and accurately sub, um, reduce the 17 SDGs to the five Ps, people, planet, peace, poverty, and partnerships, and family planning affects all of those. So here's some terms we hear a lot and we associate with the tech world of today. Innovative, disruptive, big data, paradigm shift. But this actually characterizes family planning effort over the last four or five uh, decades. Um, this is a, the iconic Time Magazine cover from 1967. And the birth control pill was approved by the US FDA in 1960. So it very quickly diffused into um, consciousness, it fueled not only a contraception revolution, but a worldwide paradigm shift, which an ideational shift that the number of children, the number of timing and spacing of your children is up to you, not to God. And that was a fundamental change. It, and it's, it came at a good time, because here we're going to take a look now at population growth over the centuries. And rapid population growth is actually a recent phenomenon. So you can see it was very low and steady uh, for most of human history. There's that dip around 1400, that was the plague. And then it started taking off around uh, the time of the Industrial Revolution. We're projected to be at 7.6 billion in 2020. We would have been 800 million more if it weren't for family planning availability and use. So, um, and most of this growth has occurred in less developed countries, so-called less developed countries, lower resource countries, and the um, uh, you can see how that has progressed over time. So in 2000, we were a little over six billion, and it's projected to top out with good family planning availability and services at 2150. Um, we heard yesterday about the importance of journalism, and one of the through lines of Switchpoint is the importance of story. And the family planning, to me, is an unsung success story. It's unsung for a lot of reasons, but one of those reasons, I believe, is the way it gets enmeshed in abortion politics, unfortunately. And um, the success I'm going to show a bit of now this is the total fertility rates in different regions and in the world. The lavender line in the center is, is the world. The low line is developed countries. This is Africa and this is Latin America and Asia. And you can see over time there's been a convergence. So um, the, the uh, desired family size is falling rapidly. The small family norm is becoming universal. and um, all the regions are down below, here's three. So actually, um, and you can see how rapidly the yellow line in Africa is also falling. So this is voluntary family planning. It's what people want. There are many mega trends driving smaller desired family size, but this is uh, what's going on. Um, we, we are all change agents, those of us who work in development. And what we're trying to do is introduce and scale up a new technology as, as rapidly as possible. So we start on the lower left. We're going to hear a little bit about vasectomy. That's still been on the lower left all these years. We want to move rapidly to the tipping point where change becomes inevitable. And then we want to move to the top where whatever the new behavior or practice is becomes a norm and an unremarkable one. And here, to me, is the greatest example recently of that. Ten years ago, when I used to show this slide, this evoked some chuckles. 
And it was meant to, and even when it appeared in the newspaper, it was meant to, but the Maasai warrior with the cell phone is unremarkable now. And, that, and so what we want is to have that diffusion curve be as vertical as possible. And it's in, what I love about SwitchPoint are all the different interconnections. So yesterday, someone even made a mention of Dolly and this famous uh, uh, dripping watch. But so time is a really, really uh, elastic concept and very important in, in the work we do. Um, there have been a number of through lines in international family planning. There's been a, a consistent emphasis on informed voluntary choice on making services available to people, on research and new technology, and on the importance of data and evidence informing policy and practice. And another one of the through lines that I have been a part of for a long time, and IntraHealth has been a part of from the beginning of its existence, is the importance of task shifting, the importance of focusing on the health worker and the health system, and task shifting to lower level workers so that you could actually get the services out to people. Um, th this is now going to sum up with a number of clicks. Uh, so what, what has it led to or what's it cost us? And th the U.S. government spends about $600 million a year, we, the taxpayers, on family planning. And mostly that's what USAID gets for the, for the population effort. And that looks like a lot of zeros, but that's actually a best buy. It's less than a cheeseburger per American per year. It's one quarter of an FPE. Who knows what an FPE is? Okay. It's a fighter plane equivalent. <laughs> when I used to work at USAID, we talked about it being half a fighter plane equivalent, but it has gone up much less than the price of fighter planes. It's one thirteenth of this almost $7 billion we spend on Halloween every year. 6.9 billion, and the total cost of the Iraq war to date is 1.7 trillion dollars. It's easy to elite over trillion. That's 1.7, that, sorry, 1,700 billion, or almost 200 million million dollars, and this is only to date. That's not the cost that's going to be in the future. So kind of a sobering uh, bit of, of data. Um, there's still a lot of work to be done. Oh, I'm, in 1960, modern contraceptive use was 20%, and most of it was in the developed world. By 2010, the uh, prevalence of modern contraceptive use was almost 60%, and most of that in the developing world. So we have made great progress, but we have a lot of work to do, and it's a matter of equity and social justice. Um, the, these are some shocking statistics, even to me, every time I show them. So um, maternal death, family planning reduces maternal mortality by about 30%. You often don't see that in maternal mortality literature because they start with the already pregnant woman. But if you consider the totality of it, it reduces it by 30%. It's a rare event in, in high-resource countries. It's a shockingly frequent event in low-resource countries, one in 31 lifetime risk of maternal death in sub-Saharan Africa. Shocking. Um, for, each, um, for each 100 births, there's a death in some countries. In South Sudan, where IntraHealth works, uh, the, the, it's uh, estimated at 1 in 26. Um, and another thing you often don't see when people are talking about maternal mortality, that's the tip of the iceberg. So for every instance of maternal death, there are 20 of serious morbidity. And to make things even more um, uh, serious, there's, there's a concept called the tyranny of the average. These figures I've just shown are all averages. So the statistics are actually worse for women in poor, rural, and disadvantaged settings. Uh, so that's what we're grappling with. That's why we do the work we do. It's estimated that more than 225 million women still have unmet need for family planning. Most of this is in Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia. That red one is there to remind us that every one of those 225 million 
is a, is a woman with her own particular needs, her own story. It's going to evolve over her reproductive life cycle, and we need to be meeting those needs, as well as the 675 million who, who are currently using methods and will continue as they move along their own cycle. But, but to end on a positive note, we do know what to do programmatically. Uh, there is a renewed commitment to family planning. We're seeing it, I mentioned USAID, but I know we have some friends here from the, the Gates Foundation, other foundations. It's, 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 uh, there's been a renewed interest in, in family planning, in, triggered in part by those foundations, by the MDGs, and now by the SDGs. And the next two, we, we are developing even more methods, more modalities, and the next two speakers are going to be addressing that in more detail. So thank you very much.